Greetings, I am Elijah. I hope all is well with all of you today. I've come here to speak very specifically today about light languages. Oh, perfect. Welcome, Elijah. Thank you for coming. Many of you have light languages or galactic languages or languages that you do not know what they are necessarily, but sometimes they bubble up within you and speak sometimes for you. Allow these to happen in a great positivity. Why? Because they are telling and praying for you in ways that you cannot pray for yourself. They are bringing positivity into your life that you do not even know how to pray for. They are bringing the law of attraction to you. They are bringing the needs of your missions to you. They are bringing the love of unconditional God to you so that you may be unconditional in your love as well remember some of you do not have light languages but that is all right set your mind in a state of prayer for all times you can pray no matter where you are or what you're doing you can throw a shoot up a thanksgiving or a prayer or a thought of positivity no matter what you are doing and this may bring a light language to you eventually. But those of you that do have a light language, use them in such a positive way to encourage your own being and encourage others around you to rise up. Now, light languages are of unconditional love. They are brought to you in a way that is unconditional you do not have to be a certain way, a certain kind of being, or have certain properties in your being, except for great belief in God, to accept these things. Unconditional love, as we spoke of many times, is not an event. It is not a single act. It is not one thing here or one thing there. But unconditional love is a way of life. Unconditional love is how you act at all times. If you are not cleared and clarified and do not have the love in you, then you will show that you do not have it and others will see it that you do not have it. Not that they are looking for unconditional love in you, but they are looking for the example of who you are. And if you are an example of unconditional love, it will be noted that there is something different about you that does not fit into the norm because unconditional love is not normal. Many are angered. Many feel stress and negativities. And as soon as they do, they start to change in their outlooks. They start to change in the way they act, in the way they speak. But when these things happen to you, you should cleanse out and bring in that which is of God. Now, to say that is to say this. You are forgiving everyone around you. You have nothing against anyone. Because if you do, then you're not being unconditional. You are blaming. You are pointing. You are judging. You are not looking at the love within them. And you are not looking at what is unconditional love. You are being selfish about what is there you are hurt or you are damaged or you are you are you are you are remember unconditional love is they are give to them love them love yourself and let it out let that love within you come out so that it is for them and for yourself 
Because when you love someone else or all those that are around you, you are aware of your own self-love. And you are aware of what it is doing for the world. But it is not something that will make your head swell or make you arrogant, but just the opposite. It will humble you and let you realize what God really wants for the world and what for God really wants for humankind. He wants the beauty of selflessness, the beauty of giving, understanding and compassion, wisdom, light. So back to the light languages. I'm almost done. <laughs> Use your light languages to benefit yourself. When you don't know how to pray or don't know what is wrong, use your light languages if you have them to speak for you, to pray for you, to love for you, to open you to a new perception of what is happening at that moment. Use your light language in the intention of edification and uplifting, for giving love, for forgiveness, for kindness and compassion, for wisdom, for the good example that you can be, for the mission that is yours. Use these light languages in so many ways, but this is one that will edify you the most because God knows. And those around you can see who you are. And they will be able to pray for you and give you what you need the most. Even if you don't know. Much love to you. Much love to you. Thank you, Elijah. Is there yes, we do have some questions. Uh, Eva go has ahead. a question. Others. And then Christine. Yes, go ahead. Eva. Yes, hi. I have actually two hopefully short questions. One is, um, it's kind of important for me, so sorry, it's not a general for everybody question. Uh, I'm trying to um, sell or rent a house and I'm putting, for somebody, and I'm putting enormous amount of time and work into it and it's nothing happening, which is very unusual. So. I, I'd like to ask what's going on with this. And my other question is, I just moved into a new place and there is something not right happening in the apartment above me, which worries me. And I'd like to know if there is some kind of abuse going on there or the opposite, because you know, you never know. Thank you so much. The answer to this will benefit everyone because everyone has certain situations like this in their lives, where there's discontent around them, where there's things that they are not happening and they're wondering why, because they have dedicated much time and energy to these things. Remember this, you do create your own reality in many senses, but, God also has a part of that in store. He knows the right timing. He knows the right sequence of things to happen for you to have the best outcome, for all of you to have the best outcome. Now, it may seem like you're putting a lot of effort into something that is not happening, and do not doubt or do not be afraid that there is something going to happen. And with this situation with the neighbors, something not quite right, it could be that you hear a lot of discomfort or arguing or noise or whatever it is that is not right in this area. You must pray in a positive manner for this to change because there is no way for you to go talk to them and have it change. There is no way for you to uh, stop them 
in any way because they have free will. But when you pray, when you bring the Spirit of God into your life frame and into your place of residence, you are affected. And you can take that and add them to your prayers, add their space to your prayer list, add their space to your prayer list, and add those individuals to your prayer list. It's not that you're just sitting there going, oh, I wish they would stop, but you have to do something energetically about it. And it's that way with all things. You, you cannot just wish it away. You can pray it away. You can love it away. You can do many things that are positive to affect it, but there may be a lesson for you to learn also. There may be something there that is teaching you about something within yourself. Are they bringing out a negativity within you? Are they making you feel a certain way? Are they bringing anger to your life? Perhaps God wants you to cleanse yourself out first and bring yourself into a positive and beautiful frame before you can even begin to start to change the energy in other places. But I do not know the situation, but I do know this. All people can learn from those kinds of situations. And if I were to ask, there's many of you that have similar situations where there's someone outside of their family or even within their family that is causing them to feel certain ways and they need to cleanse that and love these people no matter what they're doing. They don't have to accept that negativity into their lives they can bring up the positive, bring down the love of God, and push out love and not bring in negativity. I know that that doesn't completely answer your question because you would like a more immediate answer, but you know God has lessons for us to learn, and some of us, and some of us do not learn immediately about these things. You have to experience some things before you can move forward. You gave me a better answer than I expected. So thank you so much. I'm actually loving your answer. Very good. Thank you. And I love you as well. Thank you. Love you. Okay, Christine has a question. Greetings and blessings. Um, Greetings. <laughs> um, I'm wondering if um, I'm getting these strange um, noises or sounds around me, like um, uh, I heard a dog barking near my ear, and I'll look around, and it's not my dogs. They're not my dogs. And then last night when I was sleeping, I heard a dog bark right in my ear. And um, I looked at my two dogs, and they're both sound asleep. So um, what is this dog barking about? Could, could you okay, tell me? let me tell you this. I do not know the okay. message that the dog is trying to give you, but send a blessing to these dogs that you are hearing. You okay. are an animal healer. This is a spirit of an animal that needs healing. Okay. Send blessings and healing to it. Okay. You are one that blesses the animals and make them calm. You make them heal. You make them greater than they once were. Your energies heal Mother Earth as well. Because when you heal the animals, you heal part of Mother Earth because she protects the animals. And I just wanted you to know that that animal that you are hearing needs your healing touch, your blessing on this animal. That is why they are there. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. And then uh, Stephanie has a question, please. Three.
You'll have to unmute yourself. Stephanie? Perhaps, oh, uh, there you go. There she is. Hi, I had lost connection. I had to reconnect quickly. Thank you for waiting. <laughs> Could you speak up a bit? Um, can you hear me now? Test one, two. One, two. Uh, speak in a loud voice, hon. We can barely hear you. Is that better now? Yes. Is that better? That is better. Okay, wonderful. Morning and blessings to you, Elijah. Good morning. Thank you. I was wondering if there is a, what the differences and or likenesses be, are between light language and galactic language. Ah, beautiful question. And I would love to answer that. Light languages are from the spirit. And that is beautiful and very helpful. The galactic, lang galactic languages are usually from your galactic families. They're usually from those around you that care for you a great deal. And let me tell you the difference. There's very little, actually. Because those that have taken on the responsibility of helping you, no matter if they're in the light, in the spirit, or if they're in the galactic world, they are looking out for you and will help you through situations. Now, in order to use the galactic language properly, remember to bring God into it, because God is a part of these galactic beings' life as well. But before you even speak the language of light language or galactic language, bring in the God element. Bring in the love of God and the information of God and say, let me use this properly and let the best messages and the best use of this language come about. And then it will give you messages. You may not even understand them. Your subconscious will. It will give you messages of uplifting and a greater understanding and build you up and you will feel better. You will actually feel the essence of this love that is being brought to you. And I know that you are praying about certain situations, the love of family, the love of those that you feel that are disconnecting, those that are falling away. Do not worry, my dear. Love brings people back love understands but god may have to bring them low before they come back because there are lessons to learn and sometimes lessons are not easy but he does love all those around you and you deeply 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 loves you and so use your galactic language and use it in your spiritual languages in a way that is beneficial to not only yourself but those around you thank you so much i have a follow-up question if that's okay continue when you are in the midst of speaking the language are you able to tell whether it's galactic or light language by the feeling that you have or well, if God is involved in it, you may feel the same if it is spirit or galactic. But I think that intellectually, you will know the difference. You will know if it's coming from spirit, if you will know if it's coming from galactic. Intellectually, your subconscious and your being knows where it's coming from and why it's coming from that direction in some ways. You may not understand it completely, but I think that they will give you an indicator of who they are and why they're sending this language to you. Wonderful. Sometimes I can interpret it, and it's like I'm speaking uh, broken English and a light language. And other times it's just, I believe, to be galactic languages, and they are varied, quite frankly. Exactly. There are more than one person out there that cares about you. And many people uh, are the same. There are, I, if I were to ask how many people in this room speak galactic languages, I know that there are several. There are some that do not speak galactic languages, 
but it is not that they can't, but it is just not a part of them at this time, and perhaps they don't want to at this time. Perhaps it's not something that's necessary for them. But prayer is necessary for all beings. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Um, there's a question from within the chat, if I can ask that. Um, yes. Okay. Um, Stephanie, if you can mute yourself, that'd be great. Okay. Uh, it's from Trinity. She has two questions. She says, please ask Elijah if he has come across orb beings and who they may be. Four beings? Orb. O-R-B. Orb. Oh, orb beings. The orb beings are, they are different species that, um, you see, this is the way they travel in orbs. But, listen carefully, there are spiritual orbs as well. I know that orb beings can be those of spirits of past lives. That is how they present themselves to humans sometimes. Let me give you an example of that. There was an organ in a church that had not been played in many years. And it was a beautiful and majestic sounding organ and it brought the sound of great power and energy to the people. And they could feel the spirit when the organist played this particular organ. But the church had been closed and there was no one playing this organ. A team was sent in to renovate the church and renovate the organ. And so therefore they came in and they did all these renovations. And a group of organists from the neighborhood heard about it and were interested in listening to this beautiful old organ because there are some that just have a great attraction to the sounds of it. And there are many people that do as well. But, so they went in and the church was beautiful and majestic and they started taking pictures. They started to take pictures around the church and they started taking pictures of the organ. And someone sat down and started to play the organ. And all of a sudden, in the pictures, hundreds of orbs appeared. Where were these orbs from? They were the spirits of the people who knew the sound of the organ. And the, they came back to listen. And they appeared in clear, beautiful orbs all around the church. You couldn't see them with the eye, but the photographs picked them up in great number. And only after the organ was played could they see this many beautiful orbs. But it was proven that the spirit of these people came back to listen. And that is a beautiful lesson because the spirit was part of that. He allowed them to come back in their little protective shells to listen to the sound of the great organ. Now, there are aliens that have organs, uh, organs, <laughs> have um, vessels that are also spheres, but they are different colors. They are of red and green and blue. And some of these are reptilian, some of them are of other species. The greys have triangle uh, uh, ships, the uh, Asasani also triangle ships because the greys are associated with them. Um, also with many, many other species there are orbs, I could not name them, but they are the thing is, they sometimes travel in protective bubbles. They put uh, vibrational bubbles together and put a bubble around their ship and travel vibrationally. And then that can change. Uh, they, some people can see the bubble and not the ship. So that's another way to do it. Perfect. And there's a couple questions about orbs that are coming up in the chat. And also, um, Omran has a question about the orbs. So, Omran, why don't you ask your question? Hello, Elijah. I have a quick question about um, orbs. Uh, 
uh, a, f a few years ago, uh, I was uh, someone saw orbs coming out of my body, blue orbs, and when yeah, I was yeah. in the room, it cleared off the room from negative spirits. Um, yes, yes. But I never understood it why blue orbs came out of my body and around me. And, and it kind blue of left orbs. a mark wherever I went. So how, how does it come out of my body? And what is it really, these blue orbs? You're a holder of spirit and you're a believer in great love and understanding. You've been through a lot of hardships and you've been through a lot of great things, but you've come through it successfully. Is this correct? Yes, that is true. Yes. And so therefore, these are the orbs of the love that you have gained when, when you went through these lessons. You have gained these great spiritual understandings and as they come out of you they cleanse the room they are of god they are of spirit and they are of cleansing because you had to cleanse yourself of many different things for these things to be a part of you is that correct yes true, true. yes and so do not question it it is of god and as it is his way of making you an example of his love. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Understand that. Very well. Thank you. And then there's another question pertaining to orbs that uh, uh, Kenny in the chat says, so what about metallic looking orbs? They're the size of a crow's wingspan and they're, they have a look of hematite, they're a hematite metallic uh, color. Those are not ships, but those are probes. They come to look at certain things on Earth. They come to check on certain humans at certain times, but they are harmless. They are not there for uh, negative intentions. They are there to make sure things are intact. Some of them do studies and collect information from the earth and plants, animals and things of this nature, but they also are to check on certain humans because certain humans are of interest to some of these species. Now, this is a very common probe used by more than one species because it is a more galactic kind of an approach for understanding and uh, finding ways to learn about humanity and it is safe and they are permitted to do so as long as they do not interact with anything that humanity or uh humanity is doing they are permitted to send these orbs and not everyone can see them they're not always in the third dimension sometimes they are in fourth dimension and sometimes they are even in fifth dimension but the fourth dimensional ones sometimes can be seen by those that have high fourth dimensional energies. All right, perfect. And then just switching gears, there was a question that's asked by Trinity, but also echoed by Michelle. Um, she wants to know, uh, please uh, ask the best way to truly achieve emotional forgiving so that it's real towards self and others and not just intellectual. And so that Remember love can come in and, and when forgiving makes space. The first thing you must do for this to happen is cleanse. And you must ask God to come and cleanse out the negativity within you. You must ask God to bring forth his energy to, to make that a non-issue. Forgiveness is the next step. But first, you have to get rid of that feeling and, and love yourself and forgive yourself and bring that cleansing in. Cleanse yourself out and bring light in in its place. Cleanse yourself out of negativity, bring Holy Spirit, bring love, bring guidance, bring joy, bring light into the body. Bring that in first, and so that it washes things out. Now, if you truly can do that, if you can truly ask God to cleanse you, why wouldn't he? 
Why would there be anything left after you ask God to cleanse you out unless you're holding on to it? Do not hold on to it. Let it go. And then fill yourself with light. And then, as you know and feel that you are cleansed out, because your mind and heart will know, you may not feel anything. Do not go by feeling, but go by what you know to be true. Because sometimes you can know that you are cleansed out, but not feel anything at that particular moment. And why is that? Because God is doing something else there too. He's doing a little bit of work and a little bit of healing. So then after that, say with your voice, I forgive them. Whatever it is that is making you feel that way or made you feel that way before the cleansing, I heal it. I forgive it. I'm letting it go. You may have to do that many times because sometimes the pain of what others have done is strong. But do it as often as you have to until it is truly gone. And it works. Use your light language if you need to help you to cleanse, to say the right words, to help you to purify. But at that moment after you cleanse out, you can forgive. And then you can be sincere. And you can use your love. But you must know that there are ways to get rid of the negativity within you. But some people prefer to hold on to it. Please don't do that. Holding on to the negativity only holds you back. It's you that are punished and you that will suffer. Not anyone else. Oh, you'll cause other people to suffer if you hold in the negative energy. Oh, there's no question about that whatsoever. You will generate other negativity if you hold on to negativity. But in this time, this is a time that human beings must learn to purge and cleanse. It does not mean giving up things that you like to do. It does not mean, oh, I can't dance or play cards or drink beer. It's nothing to do with that. It's about the spirit and intention in which you do things. It's not about what you do, but the intention behind what you do. Is it love? Is it good? Will it connect you to other people? Will it bring harmony? Will it make you feel better and others feel better? Yes. Pray about it. Associate with it. Connect to it. You know what is right and wrong in your heart. You don't need a list of rules to tell you what's right and wrong. You already know what's right and wrong. To what is right and wrong. But if every man and woman were to say to themselves, I want to do a good intention for my life. I want good intention for my life. Do you know how much lives would change? A lot of you go, oh, everything I do is with good intention. You may, you may be someone that is a good intention person, and it may be sort of a natural thing even. But see how much stronger and much more powerful it will be to wake up in the morning and say, I want to live intentionally some kindness, a good example.
not with words, but with actions and with kindness, with beauty, wisdom. Not that you have to be talking all the time and telling them how smart and wise you are because they'll see through that. But tell them how beautiful they are. Tell them how wonderful their presence is. Pull out all the best things in the people that you know so they will want to be even more beautiful. Ah, it's not always easy with some people. It's hard to find a beautiful thing in them sometimes. But find it. Find it. Thank you, Elijah. That's lovely. Thank you. So, <laughs> I think there are others that are waiting to speak. Okay, perfect. What and I am sorry I took up so much time. I was only planning on a 15-minute visit, but I took more than that. But Well, there's no time I'm where you are. <laughs> So therefore, I will bring someone else. Okay, thank you. Much love to you all. Much love to you. Thank you very much. Namaste. Namaste. I like that word. <laughs> it means the spirit in me. And that is truly humility. And when you bow down to someone, it means you're in service. So what you're saying when you say namaste is, generally speaking, I humble myself and is in service to you as another human being. It's a beautiful and lovely gesture. Be well. Thank you. Thank you.